All right, here we go into lesson 5.6. But before we go into finding the derivatives of bases other than e, we're going to review logarithms and exponential functions of other bases besides e. So what's this all about? So first of all, an exponential function could be more than just e to the x, and a logarithmic function could be more than just ln of x, right? You've got 2 to the x, 4 to the x, 1 half to the x, 0.76 to the x. They all have something in common. Their main parent function looks something like this. I mean, we can translate them and have them kind of scooping down like that. We could have them look all different sorts of ways. They could come up below the x-axis and then go back down like that. So there's all kinds of different ways that we could represent exponential functions. But the main parent function is this way right here. It's growing a lot as we go to the right. And log base, and I'll do log base 2 of x. Well, the basic log function looks something like this. Again, we could translate that, flip it, do all kinds of different transformations to it, but that's your general parent function. So that's it. I just wanted to kind of review what they look like. That's all. So those are your basic functions. You've seen them before now with e to the x and ln x, but now we're dealing with other bases. So next, we should recall that logarithms are inverses of exponential functions, meaning a logarithm is like division is to multiplication, where multiplication is like your exponential function. So a logarithm to an exponential function is like division to multiplication. They undo each other. So for instance, if we have log 100, that's really the same as log base 10 of 100. What we're really saying is 10 to the what is equal to 100. And we're answering that question right there, and that'd be 10 to the 2. So log base 10 of 100 is 2, because 10 to the 2 is 100. Log base 6 of 136, you're really saying 6 to the what? And some teachers like to set that equal to y. So it's like saying 6 to the y is equal to 1 over 36. Well, 6 to the negative 2 is equal to 136. And so that means that the log base 6 of 136 is negative 2. An important idea here is logarithms are exponents. And again, this is a crash course in logarithms. It's not teaching you the whys behind everything. It's just going through the concepts one by one. Log base 8, 4. Ooh, how are we going to deal with that? Well, that would be 8 to the what equals 4. So this would be the inverse of a log or of, of an exponential function because you're saying 8 to the huh gives me 4. You're answering for the exponent. The way to do a problem like this, we don't know it off the top of our head, is to reduce both of these to the common base of 2. So it would be 2 cubed to the y is equal to 2 squared. And we can rewrite this as 2 to the 3y equals 2 squared. And so if the bases are the same, then the exponents must be equal. So we got 3y equals 2, y equals 2 thirds. Done. OK, don't know why I circled that one and not the others, but it works. A couple of general properties to go over. If log base ax equals y, then here's the most important property of them all, a to the y equals x. That's basically the definition of logarithms. a log ax is equal to x because you're basically saying that we are going to exponentiate with a and then also take log a. They're inverses. They undo each other, and we're left with x. Same thing here. We're just doing it in a different order. So we're taking log base a of a to the x. So they're, again, inverses. They undo each other, and we're left with x. So that would be like me taking the number with either of these, 5, adding 4, and immediately subtracting 4. We'd expect to have 5. So what am I doing to x? I'm raising it to the 8th base, and then I'm taking log a. So they undo each other, and I'm left with whatever that value is. OK, all right, keep going. So how do we solve these? We're going to leave our answers in logarithmic form. Well, to solve these, very simply, we take the log base of whatever you see on that side. So I'm going to take log base 5 of both sides. That undoes 5 to the whatever. And so log base 5, 5, they completely undo each other. We're left with x equals log 5 of 530. And that would be your answer. That would be it. OK, log base 7x equals negative 3.5. Now, Couple ways of doing this. You could just use your log rules and say, well, this is 7 to the negative 3.5 would be equal to x. Right. And we'll just leave it as our answer. That's fine. Or you could take the original problem, log base 7 of x equals negative 3.5, and raise both sides to the seventh power. Hmm. That undoes this part here. And we're left with x equals our answer, 7 to the negative 3.5. Now, some of your professors and teachers might not even expect you to need to do any of this stuff, and some might. So some take calculus as an opportunity to retest you on the stuff that you've seen in Algebra 2, as well as in pre-calculus. So we're going over it all. All right, 
more properties of logarithms got to be fresh on these. So if I have log a, a, again, they undo each other. You can think of it that way, sort of. Except here we're saying, well, let's equal it to y. We're saying a to the y equals a. So a to the what gives me a? 1. Right. So that's y, because a to the 1 equals a. So that's it. That's your reasoning behind that. Now with numbers, this would be like log 3, 3. So you're saying 3 to the what gives me 3? 1. OK, what do you do when you add logs with the same base? Well, here you're basically adding exponents. And when you add exponents, you are multiplying bases. So with numbers, if I had like log 6, uh, 4 plus log 6, 7, that would be equal to log 6 of 4 times 7, which is log 6 of 28. But not so bad. All right, let's keep going. What do we do when we subtract then? Well, the opposite of this. Instead of multiplying, we would divide. Log base a of m over n, not bad. With numbers, if we had like log 8 minus log 4, and we actually went over these earlier in lesson 5.1 when I reviewed natural log stuff. It's the same properties. This would be log of 8 over 4, which is log of 2. Beautiful. OK, so how about this one? When I have some value, a constant times log a m, that's equal to log, could be a variable too, actually, a m to the n. OK, well, what does that look like with numbers? If I have like 5 log, uh, let's do 4, of 3. Uh, let's not do something that big, of 2. That's the same as log base 4 of 2 to the fifth, which simplifies to log base 4, 32. Not bad. Not bad at all. OK, very cool. So that's just knowing those properties. We're going to now put those properties to work. And this will be the last part in this video of a very quick crash course of logarithms. So the most important property that you need to have in calculus is your ability to expand a logarithm. We've gone over this with natural logs. Now we're going to do logs of other bases, because that's where we're heading with our derivatives, and eventually integrals. So how do we deal with this? Well, I can rewrite this because it's division with some multiplication there, so we're going to go in pieces, of log of the square root of x plus 1 minus log of 5x. OK, so we have that. Then I still have this, which is essentially x plus 1 to the 1 half. Well, that 1 half can come out front. So we're going to get 1 half log of x plus 1, nice, minus. That's going to be minus everything we're about to do. We got multiplication, so we can break that apart with addition, log 5 plus log x, we're almost done. Now we've got 1 half log of x plus 1 minus log 5. Oh, yes, you got this. Let's keep going. And that's going to be minus log x. Not bad, right? I don't think that's so bad at all. You got this. You got this. Keep going. So what do we do when we got a product? Well, we're going to use that addition rule. You've got basically like a times b right here. So let's break it up. Log base 7 of x minus 10 plus log base 7 of x plus 6. Hmm, OK, well, that's, that's not so bad at all. OK, so now from here, don't forget the cubed. We can bring that 3 out front, and we'll be done. So we got log base 7 of x minus 10 plus 3 log base 7 of x plus 6. OK, now from here, what we now need to do are condense Logs. We're just going to basically do everything in reverse. And again, we're just reviewing our log properties in a blistering fast review. OK, so we've got, I'm going to tilt the camera down a little bit. What we have here is we've got 1 third log x to the plus, or x plus 4. I can swing that up here. I have to do that before I can combine things. You get x plus 4 to the 1 third. Now, a word to the wise, just because you have a plus here, or like we had a plus here, that doesn't mean you can separate two logs with plus. It's only with multiplication that we separate into logs with plus signs. So that's all grouped. That's all one number. Uh, same thing here. That plus 4, there's nothing that can be separated here. It's all one group. It's only if it's multiplied or divided that we can split things up. This 5 can go up here. So we're going to get minus log x to the fifth. Now we've got subtraction, so we're going to end up dividing. So log of x plus 4, this is the cube root of x plus 4. That's the 1 third power. You might not need to do that in class. All over x to the fifth. I like to put parentheses to group it. Super fast. All right, here we go. Log 3, 6. Nothing I can do there, but I could put the 2 up here. So I've got log 3, 6, or log base 3 of 6, plus log 3 
of 4x minus 5 squared. Now, since I've got the addition of these two logs of the same base, I can multiply the arguments. 6 and 4x minus 5 squared are the arguments of the log. 6 times 4x minus 5 squared, and that's your final answer. So, again, that was a tour de force of your logarithm properties. I just wanted to make sure you had them there. It's not a why behind the properties. It's a just do you know your properties. And at this point, you got to have them down. Okay, so I will see you on the flip side in the next video where we go over derivatives of logs and exponential functions other than when the base is e. That'll be fun. Peace.